Hey, hey, what's up, guys? It's Jordan with the Laundromat Resource Podcast. This is show 116, and I am pumped you're here today because today's guest, Lauren Burkowski, is her second time on, but her and I have been scheming secretly behind the scenes for quite some time now. And what we are doing is uh, I'm very excited about. I'm very, very excited about. I'm going to tell you about that in a second. But real quick, this interview is incredible. I, just, I was just looking over the notes. A couple of the things that we talk about today is, well, number one, she found number her number four uh, laundromat. And she, she works full time and is running now for laundromats and is killing it. Uh, and we talk about uh, advertising and marketing, which that's what she does for her day job. We talk about how to own a laundromat an hour away. We talk about how to find a manager, hiring tips, uh, how to train employees, how to navigate pricing with close competitors. I mean, we talk about a whole bunch of stuff in this episode, which I'm super excited about. So many practical things that we talk about. However, what I'm most excited about is what we've been scheming about, which is, um, you know, we've been talking how there's not a whole lot of things out there for women in this industry. And Lauren is very excited to uh, do something about that. And so our first sort of foray into helping sort of get women in this industry connected with each other is we're going to hope, well, she's going to host a meetup on me. I'm not invited because I'm not a woman, although I do have a girl's name. So I don't know, maybe I can sneak in. Uh, well, we're going to, I don't know. She's going to host a meetup on May 18th. Uh, for women in the industry, or if you're a woman who wants to get into the industry, uh, that also you you can join that. Uh, and so very excited about that. That is May 18th. You can find out information about that and sign up for it at uh, laundromatresource.com slash events. Uh, so head over there and sign up for that if you're a woman in the industry and you are interested in that. Bookmark it on your calendar. You're not going to want to miss it. Um, you also should be, if it's between now and May 18th, 2023, you should be able to just go to laundromatresource.com and there should be a sign up right on top of the page there. So uh, go sign up for that. It's going to be very cool. Very, very excited about it. Um, and uh, okay, I've said excited like six times. So uh, I am excited though. And there's lucky seven. All right. Uh, one more thing that I, uh, am very excited about. I don't know. I'm just excited right now. I'm just very excited. Uh, but one more thing, and this is today's fast lane tip is the day before that meetup. So this is May 17th, 2023. We have our next mastermind induction, which is a mastermind group is just a small group of uh, people who have a similar mindset, who are heading in the same direction. So if you're in this industry, you're trying to get in the industry and you want to be in a group of maybe three to five other people that meet on a regular basis to help everybody achieve their goals uh, quicker, whether you own laundromats now or you're trying to get into the business, the mastermind might be the best and biggest tool that you have in order to help you achieve those goals faster. And you know, the whole Jim Rome, I think it's Jim Rome quote, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. You got to be in proximity with people who can help you get to where you're trying to go in life. And mastermind group is the best way uh, I've mentioned before, I've paid a lot of money to be in mastermind groups over the years and do still currently right now. This one is included with the pro community. So if you're interested in joining a mastermind group, head over to laundromatresource.com slash pro and uh, go check that out over there. If you have any questions, let me know. All right. All right. That's it. Let's jump into it with Lauren Burkowski. Don't forget May 18th, Women in the Industry Meetup, which I'm very excited about, as you know, uh, and go sign up for that. Okay. Let's jump into it with Lauren. Lauren, welcome back on the show. Super, super pumped that you're here. How you doing? Thanks so much, Jordan. Doing great. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I am super excited to have you back on. I know, I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on. We kind of uh, talked, well, I kind of talk about, I'm predicting the future here, but I talk about it in the intro when I go and record it later. Uh, and uh, a lot of cool stuff happening uh, in the industry right now and a lot of cool stuff happening with you right now in your personal businesses. A lot of cool stuff happening with us right now. We're trying to do yep. some cool stuff together. So exciting, exciting times. Yeah, yeah. But uh, since, you, well, real quick, you know, I was going to say, since you've been on, you've had some cool stuff happening that we're going to talk about, yep. but why don't you give us just in case, you know, people haven't 
heard your last interview. Uh, why don't you give us a little background, which by the way, is I th- it's, it's like number two or three or something of the most downloaded episodes of the podcast, which is pretty crazy. So. Yeah, I was uh, kind of amazed when you shared that that stat with me. Uh, didn't totally did not expect that in terms of like how many people would be interested in my my story and getting into the laundromat business and, you know, sharing some of my experience, which is a little bit unique, but um Definitely, you know, with with owning right now, we actually we actually purchased a, another laundromat location since we last spoke. So now we have um, four locations throughout the central Pennsylvania area, which is really cool. And uh, we are continuing to grow our laundry service business. So we operate that of one of our one of our laundromats, um, and we are looking to grow our in store wash and fold business. So there's. A lot going on. Um, I first got into the laundromat business for those that that haven't watched the other podcast episode. Um, I got into it just by um, you know my family. Basically, my my father run ran laundromats um, until he passed away, and then my mom and I came into the the picture and took those over, and we've been running them ever since. And I have since purchased a, a location um, from my mom, and I'm running that independently. And then I run the other three stores with in partnership with my mom. So crazy, it's a crazy. Bit of background on me. <laughs> All of that while I mean, you work a. Uh, full-time job, right? Is that right? So in addition to the laundromat (laughs) duties, um, I actually have a couple other jobs, right? So I have um, a mom of two, so that's a whole other job in its own. Uh Um, and then I actually work as a marketing consultant for like my, my nine to five. Um, so I've, I've been doing that for about 12 years now, which is crazy to say. Um, I've worked with a number of different clients actually across the world, um, doing things from like CPG to energy, um, you name it in terms of the marketing tactics and, and what I did for clients. It's really interesting in terms of what I've been able to do uh, behind the scenes in addition to running my laundromat. So, yeah, well, I, I feel like, okay. So, I mean, you mentioned already you bought your fourth laundromat, right? Mm-hmm. And you're kind of ramping up, trying to ramp up uh, some, some drop off laundry or some, uh, wash and fold, fluff and fold, whatever we want to call it. There's, we need to standardize <laughs> yeah. it. Can we all unite together somehow, all of us, everyone and yes. pick a name for that? I, I think that would just Seriously. simplify everything. So let's figure out a way to standardize that service yeah. that we offer. Yeah. It would, um, it would definitely help with my Google ad budgets. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're all spending too much money cause we got to hit like <laughs> right. seven keywords right. for that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, uh, you know, you're, you're doing all that while being a mom, while working full time. And I kind of feel like when you, when you buy your fourth laundromat kind of feels like, you know, like you have a kid, it's like life changing. It's crazy. You have a second one and it's like, well, I already have one. So, you know, it's right. not a big deal, but there's one like at, at number three or number four, probably number three, where now the kids outnumber the parents mm-hmm. and you're like, okay, we're not man to man anymore. We're zone defense kind of thing. Right. And I feel like that fourth laundromat is almost like that third kid where you're like, you can kind of manage one, two, maybe three, three's right, kind of on the right. border there. And four is like a different level in my mind for some reason. Yeah. Is that true for you? Has, has that proven to be the case? I, is it too so, soon to tell? Well, no, we, so we've actually purchased it in August last year. Okay. So we have, I, what is that? Like, is that six, six months approximately since we purchased? And I, I mean, I agree with you. I would say we, so we did at one point have another fourth laundry, however, and we, we sold that. Um, it just, that, that wasn't the right fit for us in terms of like the location and things like that. So we have a little bit of experience. That was a different, you know, that was more of a little bit of a mom and pop store, not as large, um, as this, this fourth location, but it definitely being, so the other factor here is it's an hour from our house. So all of our other laundries were between, um, like 15 minutes to 40, 45 minutes or so. So that extra, I think 15 minutes, you know, Believe it or not, each way, right? 
yeah. driving down there, right? And back twice a week at this point is is how frequently we're going to that store. Um, it, it definitely was a, you know, it's a change and it's more time and more effort. However, I feel like we have gotten so good in terms of our systems, our finances, how we run and operate a store. It felt like, okay, we can definitely do, you know, do this and take this on as a challenge. Um, and the store itself was actually, you know, operating really well in, in terms of like how, um, how the store was was being managed we, we've changed a few things but nothing crazy so we we knew we were walking into something that was like okay this is you know making money it has a staff um one of the staff members ended up retiring which was totally fine and we actually ended up bringing somebody else on who's like a part-time manager who um is really great a really great resource so i would say without you know our knowledge <laughs> And our experience and like how our operations blueprint, if you want to call it, um, and probably that part, that assistant manager, right? Like we, we wouldn't be as successful as we are. Um, but overall, the store is thriving. It's doing well. Um, it does have some really close competition, which has been interesting because some of our other stores don't have that um close competition in terms of proximity. So we've had to, to tread a little bit lightly in terms of like pricing and adjustments there. Um, we actually purchased the laundromat from another owner, from the owner. Um, he had another laundromat in town. So he has two locations and he, he sold one. So we're still in contact with him. You know, we're in communication with them around pricing. We don't want to price ourselves out um, because they are they are pretty close in, in terms of proximity, but overall that's doing well. Um, I did have a really, <laughs> I had an interesting experience happen again. If you listen to my, my previous podcast, I talked about Christmas Eve of um, what would that be like 2021? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, Christmas yeah. Eve 2021. My laundromat had like a total sewer backup, um, had to go down there, clean it up, shut down the store for like several days to get our entire sewer line replaced. And I jokingly said like, oh, haha, -ha, nothing bad can happen again this year. The sewer sucks. And literally our newest location, the one we just purchased, um, unfortunately got so cold here in Pennsylvania. Um, I think it was about negative. It felt like negative 13 and we had a water, um, a water leak, a water break on Christmas Eve. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> I feel like I jinxed myself. Uh, but it wasn't as bad as we thought. We thought like the whole store needed to shut down, but it ended up just being one washer. So like oh, that's good. knocking on wood right now. Um, did the pipe free? I don't understand. It like, did. I don't it really did. know how all that works. Cause I've never been in that cold of weather before. Yeah. Yeah. You're spoiled, but uh. <laughs> it normally, you know, I will say it, it was very, it was really cold. It normally doesn't get that cold and stay that cold. And it was, it was in the, it felt like the negatives, um, for I think over 24 hours. And I think that's why like our, you know, our laundromat wasn't able to sustain the heat behind, behind the washer. Nice. So now we have a, a electric heater back there for the days that gets really cold. That's, that's so wild. Yeah. That would never even cross my mind mm -hmm. uh, to have to do something like that. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. Can we back up a little bit? I mean, you just said a lot of stuff and I was like, I Oh, did. I need to ask about that this. Was just and you're trying to like furiously <laughs> write down, like, what are the questions I need to ask? So, okay. Well, let's back up to this fourth one real quick. Uh, okay. First of all, how did you come across this laundromat? How'd you find it? So we came across it online actually. Um, believe it or not, one of those like buy biz sell websites, yeah. um, for me, I've had some really bad leads on there, right? Or brokers that just like weren't, it, it wasn't the right fit for us. Um, but I try to, I try to go on there a few times a, a month, just check out and see what the, the marketplace looks like. Um, it was really funny. Both my mom and I saw the ad like on the same day, we must've been looking <laughs> uh. and like I had reached out and she actually had reached out 
to to the broker and he was like hey are you guys the same people we have the same last name oh yeah um, like, yeah no, and unrelated like, yeah yes we Never work together <laughs> um so it it you know we we first reached out signed um the inform gave him the information that we needed to get some of the numbers um that looked good on paper you know, we, we had some conversations with the owner in terms of like why he was selling, um, what his experience was like running this laundromat, which he actually had run um, with his father. So I think that oh, that was cool. like kind of an interesting situation. Yeah. Um, some parallels there. And he had he like I said, um, he was running two stores at the time and he was looking to retire. So. Yeah. So you found it online. So, I mean, are you, are you just like always kind of on the prowl for laundromats or what's, I mean, yeah, absolutely. So like when we spoke, that was nine months ago and we're, we're always looking in terms of just looking online, you know, networking with our distributors, um, networking with other laundromat owners, Believe it or not, you know, Craigslist, just just even just typing laundromat for sale and then looking on Facebook like there there are some things out there um, that you will find. And I will say this definitely wasn't the first deal. Right. Um, we had gone through a number of like contacts deals that that unfortunately fell through for one reason or another um and we ended up here so i i i believe in trusting the process you know and if something doesn't feel right it's not right and if it doesn't happen it for me it's like okay that's for a, a good reason so we were definitely were selective um about the next store that we took on we didn't want to take on anything that was too much of a, a time investment at this point, just simply because like I'm, I'm working, right. My mom actually is working. She, she has a nine to five um, that she works in the finance industry. So we're busy. Right. And then my husband's running around all day <laughs> to varying laundromat locations. And then he's doing our laundry service business. Um, and, and running that with another team member. So we're, we were kind of like a little trepidatious in terms of like taking this on, but we definitely felt like it was the right opportunity and a way that we could just grow, grow our portfolio of laundromats. That's our, I mean, that's our goal. We want to make smart investments. We don't want to just like rush into something. Um, and you know, if it's not, if it's not looking great on paper, we're, we're going to walk away. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. So you said yeah. this one was a little bit bigger than that. Your first fourth laundromat. It is. How, how big is, is this one? Um, so it's it's not huge. It is. I think it's like twenty one hundred square feet. Okay. Yeah, it's a good. So size. it's a decent size. It's actually in a shopping mall, um, which is our first location in like a larger shopping center. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit different of a dynamic. Um, the town has a completely different dynamic than some of our other locations. Um, I actually, I, I really like the store. I wish it wasn't an hour away because I would probably be spending a little bit more time there. I'd love to spend more time there. Um, but again, it just, it felt like, okay, this could be the next, you know, this is the, the next right move for us in terms of just feasibility and, and how we're running things. Because if I had to be there, you know, every day I would, I would struggle. Yeah. I just, I don't have the capacity. So, you know, the machines were all operational. Um, they're, some of them are, you know, they're not the newest of the newest, right? But they are, you know, within five years um, in terms of manufacturing, the, the structure was all there. Um, and there's room to expand too, in terms of the, the wash and fold business. Mm -hmm. So right now um, they were doing, they were doing no advertising, no marketing whatsoever, um, no promotion of the, the laundromat short of just having like a Google page 
that they never really updated. So we came in, we, you know, started doing Google ads, um, social ads to get people to actually come into the location. Um, and, you know, we are experiencing an uptick in, in revenue there, which is great. And then eventually we would love to add, like actually like pick up and drop off. I, I'm sorry. Um, delivery service. <laughs> Whatever, whatever that the right term is there. Um, Pick up and delivery. Pick up and delivery. Oh yeah. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Um, at somebody's home or, or business. So that's that's down the road a little bit because it does you know cause a little bit of a logistical challenge. We're looking at some partnerships there, um, but definitely on our you know on our radar in terms of expanding revenue there. Yeah, pretty crazy. Okay, well, I mean. Can we talk about like, what are, what, what have you learned owning a laundromat an hour away? Cause I get asked about it this all the time, right? How far well, away can I own? Can I own it is an hour too far? Is an hour and a half too far? You know, so what have you learned uh, in terms of owning further away and knowing yeah. that you sort of intentionally bought a stable business an hour mm -hmm. away also. So keep that in mind if you're listening to this, but yes. you know, what have you learned here? Yes, this is not a, a laundromat that needs a ton of TLC. So just to be really transparent, it needs modernized a little bit in terms of aesthetics, but it's very functional. And like I said, the staff was was there and we you know brought somebody on. Um, for me, I mean, I do not recommend this is your first laundromat and this is, you know, you're an hour away. You are going to need to spend so much time there to really get to understand the business and really understand, um, you know, how things operate and really, you know, you have to get your hands dirty in this business, right? Like you need to understand how to fix things, um, how to provide great customer service, a good experience, also be a good employer. Like there's so many layers to what we do as a laundromat owner. Um, I just don't, I don't personally think that that's the right move. You know, if you're just getting started in this industry, is it possible? I mean, anything is possible when you put your mind to it. Right. Um, I will say you have to like to drive. <laughs> so do, you know, if you're, if you're great at that, Good. Um, we actually have, so we purchased a van in 2020 for our laundry service, which we, you know, we just bought it for the laundry service, not really thinking about the laundromats. Um, and it's, it's actually been a blessing for us because now we don't have to use like our personal vehicles to go places. Um, and it also doubles as a, a, a place to put, you know, all of your tools, all of your supplies that you may or may not need because you're an hour away. And if you forget something, you know, you're going to Home Depot down the street. You're not driving back home an hour and then back down. Um, so definitely in terms of just being, you know, operationally excellent, being as organized as possible, um, communicating with your employees has been really important. I will say that we definitely have made sure we have a presence in the store. So despite being an hour away, um, we're down there twice a week. So we're making sure that we're there. We're talking to customers. You know, we're, we're answering the phone when they call and there's a problem. Um, we're responding to them when they have a complaint or a concern or something like that. So we're still very involved. You know, we're involved as much as possible. And I will say having the um, hiring our assistant manager was was really good because she is there multiple times um, a day. So she'll be there like for a set a set time period during the day. She also happens to run the walk in um, wash and fold business. So she is a great person where we're like, hey, this is an emergency. Can you help us out? I don't know that we would, I feel like we would be struggling a little bit more if we didn't have that person that we could call and say, Hey, this is a challenge right now. Can you help us out? Um, we've gone down there of course, when there's, you know, been, been something going on. Um, but having that support and somebody that you trust is, is really important in all of that. So, yeah. So how did you find your, your manager? I mean, that's, that seems to be tricky right now too. Yeah. So in full transparency, we knew this person 
However, they were um, living in an, a different town, like 30 minutes away. And then before we actually purchased the laundromat, they actually ended up moving into the town that we purchased the laundromat in. And we, this was not, this was not at all intentional. We didn't know this until after we purchased the laundromat. Um, because the staff that was there was actually supposed to come over with us. We had had conversations with them as part of the due diligence and said, like, hey, here's what we'll offer you. We, you know, we raised their, um, their wages. Like we, we had a meeting with them. Like we were very transparent. We're like, we're not changing, you know, we're not changing your shifts. We're not changing anything except you're just getting a raise. So, um, but turns out the one person wanted to retire. So that then created the opportunity for us to bring in somebody with um, just a little bit of a different experience, a um, little bit of a different style in terms of like customer service. And um, yeah, we were like, okay, this is perfect. So it, it was, again, I feel like it was a little bit of fate. You know, I, if, if this wouldn't have worked out and, and she wouldn't have wanted to come on, you know, I would have just hired somebody from Indeed, which can be a challenge. Um, I'm hiring right now for actually three locations, which is, it's difficult, but, um, I think you just have to keep, keep trying and putting yourself out there and hopefully the right person will come along. And I, I will also say, make sure you're paying people a, like a livable wage, because if you're paying them, you know, nine, ten dollars an hour. I know California is a totally different scenario um, than Pennsylvania, but our minimum wage I think is like seven twenty-five. Like that nobody can live off of that. Um and unfortunately some of these locations that we've acquired, they're getting paid like eight fifty. And I, I just I'm baffled by it. So anyways, um I think that's key. Paying, you know, paying people having a um a good support system for them, training, um, being just communicating, I think also really helps too. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean, man, if you're hiring for three locations, how do you, how do you navigate that when you're down employees like that, you have a, a job? I mean, it sounds like you have a pretty good team, like between yourself, your mom, your husband, you've got like Mm -hmm. kind of juggle around a little bit uh responsibilities and and step in if you guys need to maybe uh, is that yeah. how you're juggling it how are you so well so it, we don't we don't just hire one like we don't have one cleaning person at each location so when we would lose somebody we would have other people that could kind of like step in and support so essentially we're like shuffling around the schedule you know each week to make sure that we still have the coverage that we need and then we'll, we'll step in for sure like my mom, like she like actually really likes to clean the laundromat. So she right now has a shift at our, our closest location that she takes on um, and, and does the cleaning, which is no problem, you know, because when you're already there at the laundromat going through and cleaning, I mean, it's it's not a huge deal. So usually when my husband will go down and, you know, do some maintenance or um whatever, a uh, collecting coin, he'll, he'll clean at the same time. So we're just, we're, we're working around it for right now. Thankfully we have the people that, you know, are there, um, are great at what they do. And we've had, we, you know, have had them be able to like work around that. So not a huge deal. Um, however, the, the people that we're hiring for, we went, so we're trying to actually get some more coverage in the stores. Like we want more cleaning people and um, more customer service just like to be there more often because we're noticing um, so we're noticing a couple of things our stores are definitely getting dirtier like faster mm -hmm. um, I think that might have something to do with the winter perhaps like our floor some one of our some of our locations have just been like I'm like I go in there and I'm like has this been mopped <laughs> and it and it was just mopped right so we feel like we need to invest a little bit more just to get more um, cleaning. And then also with the wash and fold, um, we're hoping that the high, the new hires can basically, you know, do both. 
So they're able to do more cleaning in the store, have more presence, offer more um, of a positive customer experience. And then on top of that, be able to fulfill this um, this new revenue that we're hoping to to generate within the store itself. So we're going to see. It's a little bit of an experiment. Um, I'm hoping we find the right people. You know, that's always the toughest part. Mm-hmm. But... I am not in a position where I'm like, okay, I have to hire somebody tomorrow, you know, thankfully. Um, that could happen at any point in time, right? So I do a lot of my, um, some people will do their recruiting in the store, which is fine. Um, I think it depends on the location. Some people are, are great. I've had some bad experiences recruiting people from in the store too. So I think it, I think it's a big, it depends. Right. But I also, um, have used indeed in the past where I've been able to get a lot of respondents, you know, I weed through them. I look at their, their resume. And then what I usually do is set up like a block of time that says, come into the laundromat at this time to fill out your application. So I'm not stuck for hours waiting for people, I'm not in that business, right? So I try to do as much as I can before, make sure I have the right people, you know, call them on the phone, make that connection and then say, hey, come in during this time range and fill out an application. And then we do a background check. If everything works out, you know, we bring them onto the team. We do the hands-on training for a couple um, a couple shifts. Like we don't just like let them go off and do their own thing. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of how we're doing hiring right now. But like I said, it's it's a it's a really interesting time period. I I've I've seen people lose their jobs and need need jobs. So I'm I'm optimistic about it and I'm grateful that like we can employ people and give them an opportunity for sure. Yeah, totally. I, I, that was a it took me I like one of the things I don't like about this podcast is I feel like I end up telling everybody all the embarrassing things about how I did everything wrong, but it took me like an embarrassing amount of time to figure out that whole redundancy in, in employees, right? Instead of hiring mm-hmm. one or two people for longer amount of hours or more hours, uh, it, it just makes sense to have, yeah. you know, a few part-time employees and maybe one full-time employee if you need somebody full-time, right? Mm-hmm. So that you can make that shuffle. Because I, you know, I, I just remember I was like covering a shift uh, while I was like between hires. And I was like, why? I'm like wiping down machines or whatever. And I'm like, why don't I just hire a, a few people yeah. and split the hours between it? Like, Duh, like it's so obvious, right? But mm-hmm. it took me an embarrassing amount of time to figure that out. So just you going you through that whole learn. process. <laughs> yeah. Just yeah. you going through that whole process is super helpful. I appreciate you yeah. sharing that. Yeah. I mean, I would say so for us, and you're and again, you'll figure this out, right? In terms of like when are your busy days, when are your busy times, like mm-hmm. that's how and that's why we are a little fluid there until we can figure out things and things change between summer and winter. And, Mm -hmm. um, one of our stores, we realized we needed more people on Saturday and Sunday. So now we have, um, three set shifts Saturday and Sunday instead Monday through Friday, we're at two shifts. So it just, it honestly depends. You know, we might decide like our one store, we decided, Hey, we need to bring somebody on in addition to Saturday and Sunday. Friday is really busy. So we just, we have to um, work around that, you know, de- depending on each store. Yeah. And the location, so. Yeah. Um, when you're, when you're looking at resumes, what are you looking for at those? Re- I mean, you said you kind of picked through the resumes. What are you looking mm-hmm. for? in those resumes so ideally some some form of um customer interface like in terms of their experience some form of janitorial experience would be a positive for me um length of employment like i don't want somebody that's been working you know they're working three months three months three months next job next job um i i would love to hire somebody that is like committed to to you know, being a part of our 
of our organization. So I'm usually looking at tenure. Um, I'm not, you know, I'm not super picky, right? Like I'm willing to give people a chance and, and a job, but I need somebody that like wants to work. I do need people to pass a background check though. And that can be a little bit challenging, especially in this industry. Um, so I, you know, again, I give people a second chance, right? Like I'm, I'm not going to say no to you. I look at the situation, Um, there's certain things that are just like non-negotiable for me as far as like a background check goes, you know, if you're dealing with money and customers, um, there's just, there's certain things I just, I just won't budge on. But for the most part, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm willing to give people a shot. So. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay. Show up, (laughs) be on time. Be nice to people. Like yeah. that's my, my main goal. And like, please do just clean, clean the laundromat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and you know, it's probably a good sign if you're, if you're, well, it could be, I guess a bad sign too, but if your laundromat's getting dirtier than it used to, it's either you got bad cleaners or you got more traffic coming through. Right. And hopefully it's, yeah, I think the it's the latter. I also think our parking lot is dirty in this location (laughs) to be transparent. So I have like reached out to our landlord and was like, Hey, I think we need like some lot cleanup, you know, like we, we have a cam charge and that's part of it. So I just like reached out to her and like, there's a lot of stones that kind of come in and you know, they just, no, it's, it's that time of year, right? Like where there's salt down because of the snow. Um, so it's just like, we just have to do more. I think. Yeah. And people are messy. Like we can clean in the morning. It's pristine. And then like literally like an hour later, it's like a bomb went off in there. So yeah, well, I, you know. I've said it before. As soon as a dryer sheet hits the ground, it's a free for all. You can throw mm-hmm. your fried chicken bones all over the place and diapers, mm-hmm. stick them to the yeah. wall. And it doesn't matter. Yeah. As soon as that dry, no. like it's no. a free for all. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, like that's an extension it. of their home, which I like, you know, come in, do your laundry. I get that. I want a very inviting environment. I don't want people to feel, you know, bad about doing your laundry in my location, but people that take it too far, I'm just like, why? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, when you, when you hire somebody, can you, I mean, you don't have to go into like crazy detail, yeah. but like, can you talk a little bit about what's your process of getting them up to speed? Do you have like a standard training process? Does it depend? How does that work? Well, it do, it will depend on what you were hired for. So like if you're just solely doing laundry, that's different. Um, but if you are doing like a cleaning, that looks a little different. And some people do both. So we do have, um, we've developed like a manual, like as far as onboarding goes and like some of our processes and like responsibilities go. Um, that is actually presented. So the, the responsibilities and duties would like be presented to that person as part of hiring. So they know like what's expected of them. And then as far as like the training is concerned, um, that's when we're going through, you know, those varying manuals to kind of say, okay, you're cleaning. Here's what's expected of you in your shift. Here's the supplies. Here are the things that you need to like, okay, if there's an emergency, call me for this, call me for that. Um, don't call me for this. <laughs> don't call me for that. Mm-hmm. So just going through like operationally what's expected. Um, that's like day one. And then we will actually go through like, if it is somebody cleaning or doing the laundry, um, we will actually go through the shift like with them and do the cleaning in partnership with them or the laundry in partnership with them. So they can see like exactly what is expected. Um, And again, like we have, we have like a checklist. So each shift, the person that's coming in is supposed to go down the checklist and say, I did all of these things. Um, You know, the dryer lint screens were cleaned on Wednesday. Like we have things that were, putting in place across all of the stores. So that way they're, you know, operating as, as closely as possible. And, and we're very crystal clear on like what is expected of the employee. So hands-on training, we're there to support. Um, most people pick it up pretty quickly. So we only need to do a handful of shifts with them. But, um, you know, I've, I've never really had anybody had a problem. I've had people walk out like a week in and say, I can't do this anymore. Uh, so that happens. That's always fun when you invest a lot of time on training and, and getting people up to speed. But that's why we have like 
things put in place so I'm not recreating the wheel every time, you know? That's that's never fun. Yeah, that, that is never fun. And getting that consistency is tough when you don't have it standardized and mm -hmm. clear for everybody. Yeah. Who's who's going through the shifts with the people? Is it you, your husband, your mom? It is it your manager? Who's it depends on who's who's available, frankly. Yeah. Like we're my between my mom, Devonair, and myself, we're just we're in it together, right? So we're communicating constantly. We have like a group text going. Um it really, you know, if my mom's up for it, she likes that stuff. So I'm like, okay, you go do it. But if she's not, then I'll, I'll go in there. Dev will go in there or some of other employees that are, uh, you know, they've been, they've been there for a long time. They're willing to like say, Hey, I'll take that person on on my shift and we'll do this together. Um, so there are, you know, we create opportunities for people to like mentor others and, but, but I will say we we do a lot of stuff ourselves. And again, we're running four laundromats and one laundry service. At some point, this is going to be unattainable. Mm -hmm. So I just want to stress, depending on where you are in your journey, maybe store one, you're really hands on, you know, four stores we have split between three people and then 10 stores. I mean, I don't know how you would do it without like a full time manager. I really don't. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I think nice. that's at that point, you're, you're bringing people on, you've got yeah. a, a bigger team, right. And you have more levels uh, mm -hmm. to go there, but, yeah. but yeah. I mean, all the things that you just said, like, I just been taking note. I mean, this is awesome. This is exactly why you and I have been talking and why yeah. you have come on board to offer consulting services. So, I mean, if you're, if you're wowed the way that I'm wowed with what uh, Lauren is doing and you want to talk more with her, you know, you can go book a call with her anytime. Lauren, slash coaching. So I just, I know it's uh, probably awkward for you to plug yourself, but I will plug you because you are doing some crazy, incredible stuff, uh, you know, with your, with your business and doing it while working a nine to five, which is mm -hmm. double incredible. Uh, so, yeah. um, okay. So I, I wanted to go back uh, again to this number four. So you bought the laundromat from uh, from somebody who has another mm -hmm. laundromat in the same city, same town, same town and not too far away. No, it's literally like a mile down the road. That's a really mile. interesting to me. Right. Because I, don't, I I'm trying to think of a scenario where I like want to sell a lot like a, a laundromat to a competitor who's going to compete directly with me. Is exactly. he planning on selling that other one? What's the, so I definitely, I think he does okay. eventually that was, so that was his original store, the one he didn't sell. And I think it has sentimental value, which I understand um, because that was like his dad's first store. So I think he wants to hang on to that like a little bit longer. Um, but yeah, it was, it's, this town was interesting because there are, um, there are four laundromats within, I want to say, a three mile radius, which it's a small town. Like, it's not a very big town. Um, everybody has their, you know, their different advantage. Everybody has their little, like, customer base. We're, you know, very polite to each other. I actually know, I know um, the other owners too. Oh, so sorry. we're all, it's all, yeah, it's community. Yeah, I mean, we're we get it. We're in the same business together, right? So like we are competitors, but at the same time, I you know, we're all there to serve the same customer base and provide um a service. I will say each one of them has their advantages. I know we're definitely um one of the cleanest in terms of just coming into the laundry and having a, a positive experience there. And the fact that we have people there on site, um, they're not there all the time, but they're there, you know, during our peak busy times. I definitely think that that helps because it, it adds to the the overarching customer experience. So yeah. how do you, how do you navigate pricing when you have like close competitors like that? You know, that's a big struggle for a lot of people. It is. It especially, is, and especially, sorry to interrupt, but especially no, when things are going crazy, like here in California, we've got utility costs going up. I think other places too, uh, yeah. you know, interest rates going up, all that stuff is happening and that puts pressure on us because we have to adjust our pricing. But if our competitors don't, it, it can be tough. How do you navigate that? 
Yeah. So you're a hundred percent correct. We, when we purchased the store, we were like, this is so, the prices were so low. They were, it was just, I was blown away that this person (laughs) was, you know, making a profit here. So we just, I mean, the lowest priced, um, front loader, we, we had to up it. We updated it a quarter. That's all we could do and feel comfortable about doing it. Um, and then, so that was back in August and as part of the as part of the sale, we were actually trying to get um, the previous owner to up the prices before we purchased the laundromat. He didn't he didn't want to. Our wash and fold is a different price mm. because it was so low. I I mean I Jordan I like, <laughs> I was like how are they making money? You know they're literally not. So um, we updated that independently. But he's not doing actually none none of these other laundromats are doing any digital marketing. And I hope they're not listening. I didn't say <laughs> what location. They don't know where I'm at, but uh, <laughs> they're not doing any of that. Yeah. So I'm hopeful that if we can continue to invest, you know, in in that tool we're actually going to be getting a website soon too that was on my list um for this year so i'm going to be able to get people to you know engage a little bit more get some more information about us online i'm hoping that that will then help with additional revenue for the store but yeah Yeah. it's an interesting it's an interesting situation and i'm just for the longest i'm just like how how have they been successful operating at this at this level and mm-hmm. in my other stores like my electric bill went tripled same with the gas and it's been like i'm i'm updating pricing across the board and it's not just a quarter unfortunately like i hate to do it i'm not that person that's like you know trying to get extra money and it's it's just like operating costs right and we need to be profitable and i need to be able to pay myself (laughs) and i need and i need to be able to pay my employees and um give them a a livable wage and i can't do that if i'm giving away free services unfortunately because it's you know it's getting passed down to the consumer but it's passed to me from from all of these um varying organizations that unfortunately we have to work with so Yeah. Yeah. No, it's true. I mean, and that's, you know, one of the things we're not good at across the industry typically is raising those prices when we need Mm -hmm. to, um, and operational costs will eat into your profits and then it will eventually consume all of your profits (laughs) if you don't act. Um, and especially, I mean, we've seen a lot of inflation happening and, you know, I think in a lot of parts of the country, the, the, practical inflation that we have felt in our industry uh, in the things that we need to utilize and consume for our businesses is even higher than, you know, the, the average inflation. Right. Yeah. Um, and so we have got to be on top of that stuff. Otherwise we'll end up either with zombie mats that aren't really making money or we'll end up out of business. Exactly. Um, that's yeah. tough though. It is tough. And, and especially cause you know, a lot of us serve a, a lower income demographic. Right. And so it's hard to raise prices cause we just know like everybody's being squeezed right now. Exactly. Um, I do. I do think like the laundry service, that's more of like a luxury item. Right. right. Yeah. Um, that, that is less of a concern for me, but it's really like, you know, we're there to provide people the ability to wash their clothes and, like that is a basic level service that, that people need, you know, it's, it's up there with food, you know, and shelter and healthcare. So, yeah. But if you're not making enough money to cover your costs and having a profit to be able to pay yourself, you can't serve that yeah. community, right? Like exactly. that's, that's what it comes down exactly. to. And that's the perspective shift. I think a lot of us need is, mm-hmm. You know, if you want to do something good for the community, you need to be able to charge enough to be able to do something good for the community. Otherwise, you can't. And exactly. That's, you know, 
that's I wouldn't like, be able to employ my staff. Like yeah. it just it it's just a trickle down effect. Totally. And I think people don't understand how expensive it is to actually run a, a laundromat. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. it's just it's gotten more and more and more expensive. Every time I go to Costco, I'm like, oh that that price went up, you know, or the, I go online to buy soap and now it's like $20 more than what it was pre pandemic. And I was actually losing money on my soap, unfortunately. And I looked at the numbers and I'm like, Oh no, I'm, I'm not making any money here at all. So I had to up my, my soap pricing, which again, I don't love doing that, but I have, like, I have to, it's, yeah. it's a part of anywhere. I, you know, I said to my husband, I'm like, you can't go to McDonald's and buy a dollar Coke anymore. Nothing is, there's no dollar menu at McDonald's, right? Like there literally isn't. So at this point, it's to be expected. And I think it's just a part of the economy and we just have to do what we have to do to survive. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's awesome. Awesome input. Awesome insight uh, into all that. Thank you for sharing. I mean, you you yeah. shared a lot of like crazy cool stuff about, you know, the hiring process, the training process, navigating pricing, like all this, like so good. Yeah. So good. Uh, so go book a call with Lauren. If you're, if you're navigating any of that, you're trying to get into this business. Awesome stuff. Um, yeah, okay. I would, I would uh, love to talk to people about that. I would also, you know, if there's things like around marketing that um, people have a question about if they're like just getting into the business or they just purchased their their new laundromat um, or if they're, you know, an existing business, but they're looking to expand because they may have a scenario like me where nobody was doing any digital marketing in the, the town that, that we just purchased our laundromat in. So I would say each each location is different, right? And each scenario is different. Um, so I've had experience in so many different things and, and definitely open to talking to people in, you know, about the laundromat industry. Um, and then I have all of that, my experience in the marketing world. So I feel like that at least gives me a little bit of advantage. You know, I'm able to, to operationally run the stores, but then also like market them too, which is, which has definitely been a big help for me personally. Yeah, totally. And a huge opportunity in most of our markets, uh, and a huge, right. you know, low hanging fruit. Like you said, you're in, you're in a town with a couple of little laundromats and they're just not doing it at all. Right. And so that gives you a mm -hmm. big advantage, yeah. um, can give most of us a big advantage if we're, even, even doing a little bit of it. And then if you right. put together a full plan and implement it, I mean, you can, you can really, that's have a, big a whole advantage. other story. Yeah. 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 Well, and it, and it leads, this leads naturally, I think into another thing that we've been talking a lot about is, uh, women in, in our industry. And, uh, you know, there's that I know of, and I don't know if you know of anything else, but there's, there's not a whole lot that's directed specifically towards women in, in this industry. And I think there's some, maybe, I don't know, we've talked a little bit about some of your yeah. unique challenges. I don't know. You want to share anything about what's it like being a woman owner in this yeah. industry? Yeah. I mean, for me, so I feel like this is like women in business in general. Mm -hmm. Um, like, I hate to say this, but I feel like sometimes we're counted out or maybe looked down upon a little bit in terms of just respect and abilities. Um, I've experienced in my professional career as, you know, a marketing consultant, but in the laundromat specifically, I mean, just, just even talking to distributors and them discounting you surrounding like what your experience is and like, you know what you're talking like I know what I'm talking about right and if I don't I'm gonna ask the questions and I'm there for a reason and I've experienced things that just it's not right like in terms of how I was treated um and I've learned that you have to be you know assertive a little bit. You have to communicate. You have to stick up for yourself. I'm not one to sit back and like let somebody um, disrespect me or, you know, provide me a subpar experience just because I'm a woman. Um, I even just walking around, I will say this, um, the convention in Atlanta, 
last year, mm-hmm. like I definitely didn't feel like, like it's male dominated mm-hmm. for sure. And the diversity is just, it's not there for me industry wide. Um, but again, I feel like that's kind of similar in other industries too. But I, I feel like women can totally do this, right? Like you can totally run a laundromat by yourself. Um, I saw my mom do it for several years before I came in to help her after my kids were a little bit older. Um, it, it takes, you know, it, it just takes a little bit more effort, which is unfortunate. Uh, but I do feel like, you know, having a voice is really important in this industry. I'm excited to be able to connect with other women. I think even just going to the the convention, I was able to like network and meet other um, women owners and prospective women owners. And we're still connected. I connected with a few um, on Facebook, on the Facebook group. And it's for me, it's really about like, empowerment encouragement and also like sharing your your experiences because i think there's something to like i think there's something that they can learn from right like sharing how we're working through things sharing how we've experienced something how we're combating you know a challenge together i i feel like just makes us stronger you know and that my mentality is like i'm i i kind of like joked about the fact that we're, um, you know, I'm, I'm, there's four laundromats in a small town and, you know, three miles around, like that's, that's kind of tough to be profitable. Right. But I think it takes just being able to like network. And I said, I know all, like, I actually know all those owners, like I have their phone numbers in my phone. I know that sounds crazy, but like just being able to, um, put yourself out there and just try to like further what is what we're doing in this industry, I think is, is really important. Um, and I do like, I want to, I want to go back to the convention, like in a couple years, and I want to see like more women walking around there. Right. And women walking without their husbands. Like I, I, that's like, I know that might be a little far fetched, but I, I want to see more people, be empowered and encouraged to be able to like do this and take this on. And it is an investment. It's a time investment. Um, You know, there's times where it's stressful and, and it can be challenging, but I do feel like all of us together, I mean, we, we can do really great things. Right. And I think the laundromat industry is one of those just like little hidden gems, right? Like we're kind of operating like, under you know the radar a little bit we're not a glamorized industry it's really you know some days are not fun some days are messy and dirty but then there you know are days that are super rewarding and for me i i love making connections that's part of what i do um in my nine to five in terms of just what i do i think it's a part of my personality so i definitely for me want to grow my network, make more connections. And I, I really want to see more women succeed. I do. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. And that's, I mean, that's why, you know, mentioned in the future, in the intro, uh, we're still working out the details now, but in the future, we will know the details and that will be in the intro um, or in the show notes or in, if you're on YouTube, in the description down below, there'll be links to how, how you can get involved. So if you're somebody who is a, a woman owner of a laundromat, or if you're someone who is a woman who is trying to get into this business, uh, you know, we're putting together a, a free, I'll call it a webinar. I don't know how webinar yeah. it'll be, but at least it'd be a chance, uh, an initial kind of chance to get together as women in the, in the business uh, to come together and and start those conversations happening and start putting together more things to do together and more uh, infrastructure of support for women in this industry. And Laura and I have been talking about how she's, she's pretty passionate about uh, heading that up. And if you're interested in either participating in that or partnering with Lauren and Lauren, my resource in doing that stuff, uh, you know, go, go click on the links that are in the show notes or the description down below or whatever I told you to do in the intro, go do that uh, too. Um, But I'm really excited about that. I think it's awesome. I think that your kind of vision for this 
uh, for our industry is, uh, is, is great. And I think it, um, is needed. And I think that, you know, like you said, in, in a lot of industries, you know, women are either underrepresented or under supported and, you know, being able to, you know, put some representation and some support, uh, together for women in this industry, I think would be nothing but positive. And we're always talking about moving the industry forward, right? This yep. is one of those steps in moving the industry forward. So I'm super pumped exactly. about it. Super pumped about exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. I, I feel like we can be stronger when we're like talking to each other and we're, totally. you know, sharing those experiences. And if we're just like siloed and like in our own world and just going through it. Right. Cause I, I've been there before where I'm just like, Oh, is this even worth it? <laughs> You know, I've asked myself that mm -hmm. um, we have bad days sometimes, but I feel like when I talk to people and when I make that connection, it makes me feel better. And I, I hope it makes them, you know, feel the same way. Yeah. So and I've I've had the opportunity to meet people from different states, different countries. Um, that's been a really cool experience. And there's um, one person that I've been connected with and we're going to try to meet up in person here. Um, she just purchased like her first laundromat, which was actually really exciting. I was really excited for her. Um, she just got some equipment installed. And at some point we're, we're hoping that we can meet up in person. But Awesome. Well, that's the whole premise behind lot of my resource behind this podcast. So I think right. that's true across the board for everybody. Um, and especially, you know, for women to, uh, to be able to do that too. So that's, I love that. I am super excited about it. Super pumped about it. Hopefully, uh, if you fit the demographic and want to be a part of it, you'll, you'll come join, uh, Lauren with, uh, you know, at least this initial thing as we work towards trying to figure out what this looks like long-term. And, yeah. you know, we've been talking about, you know, in-person things and online things that, you know, you can engage in, in a variety of different ways and support yeah. each other in a variety of different ways. So I'm super pumped. Lauren, yeah, me too. this has been incredible as always. I'm sure this will be equally as popular, if not more so uh, than your last interview. So thank you so much for coming on and really, really appreciate you. Can't for, uh, can't wait to uh, keep working together in, you know, whether that's on the consulting side. So go book a call with Lauren if you're interested in the consulting side um, and seeing, you know, what we do together uh, for women in this industry. Super excited about yeah. that. Likewise. And looking forward to connecting with a bunch of people. That's hopefully. right. <laughs> All right. Well, on that note, if somebody wants to drop you a quick email, what's the best way to contact you? Yeah, so it's my first name, last name at gmail.com. So Lauren Burkowski at gmail.com. But yeah. I feel like you should put that in the comments I'll, because I'll my last notes. name, I mean. Yeah, I'll put <laughs> it in the Polish. notes. <laughs> uh, so you can contact her that way. Book a call with her at laudermanresource.com slash coaching and do whatever I said in the intro uh, if you want to get involved in the women uh, in, in the industry uh, event. All right. Awesome. Thanks again, Lauren. And uh, we'll chat soon. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Jordan.